Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for frame rate is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This episode of Frame Rate is brought to you by Shutterstock.com. With over 1 million high quality video clips, Shutterstock helps you take your creative projects to the next level. For 25% off your new account, go to Shutterstock.com and use offer code FRAMERATE1113. For the balloon. That's helium. Episode 147, the show that helps you to watch what you want, when you want, where you want, no matter what device you're using, no matter what dress you have on, no matter what color your eyes, you get to watch what you want. I'm Tom Merritt. <laughs> hey, man, I'm Brian Brushwood. And I guess you're saying that we love you just the way you are, man. Don't That's try right. to impress us. We are you don't your to... Stevie Wonder. Uh, let me throw one thing out right now, and you can answer but is it, it at is FR. Is it what the Germans were singing at the beginning of the yeah, show? Yeah, dude. Like, like there's, uh, I think they put subtitles on there, and I think I noticed that it was like NSFW for Americans, but, um, all right, for Germans, but whatever. If you're a German at work, sorry, bro. <laughs> let us, let us know if man. you got in trouble. You're a tolerant society. Cares yeah, about a sure. little words, right, man? It's all good. <laughs> right? Let's get to... How do you say big story in German? Um, uh, Doofenshmirtz. This just in, the big story. Okay, we feel like we've been talking about this story forever. Amazon has some original shows. One of them is Alpha House, starring John Goodman, about some senators who room together in Washington, D.C., and they're all traditional conservatives in the Republican Party dealing with the Tea Party. It's written by Gary Trudeau of Doonesbury fame. The other one is Betas. It's a comedy about a startup in Silicon Valley and all the trials and tribulations that the fun guys go through to get their app launched. They're finally coming. If you're like, wait, I've been hearing about this forever. They're not already out. No, they're not already out. You can watch the pilot since last spring. But here's what Amazon's going to do. Uh, November 15th for Alpha House and then November 22nd, for betas, they will launch the shows for everyone for free, the first three episodes all at once. However, after that, every week, one episode will come out at a time and only to people who subscribe to Amazon Instant Prime Video or Amazon Prime Instant Video or whatever order those words are in, Brian. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, I'll tell you what, this is the real life laboratory to test the claim that was made by Justin Robert Young, because back when they announced Arrested Development, they announced they'd all be coming out at once. He made a huge case for why this was a terrible idea, how if you want to have that weekly buzz, if you want to maximize your ability to reach out and get people talking about your thing at the water cooler, you got to go week after week after the week. Now, he later recanted that position. He said... That was not the right call for Arrested Development. They should have. They did exactly the right thing. I'm glad they didn't release it week after week or else after the third week. Nobody would have cared on planet Earth. But now, and now keep in mind, what they did with Arrested Development was a very particularly daring 
comedy experiment by having all these nested things with stories and parts out of order where you know, as you watched it, you know, it all kind of threaded together. And there really was no cliffhanger, whereas this will be a more traditional kind of narrative. Both of these, I assume, where you'll well, have something happen one week. Traditional kind of narrative. Yeah, no, 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 sure, sure. So but, but, is the new black and. Well, that, that's that's true, but but then again, Netflix has staked its reputation. Like that's the thing Netflix does now, and so Amazon uh, is again. This is smart for them to say, let's try being different from Netflix. People are always asking, you know, that's the number one complaint we get about Amazon Instant is that it's like, oh, it's all the same stuff as Netflix. And then it's like, well, let's be not Netflix, even though we're obviously following Netflix's lead on original content. But outside of that, let's be different. Far be it from me to ever admit that Justin Robert Young is right about anything. Let me just get that clear right up front. <laughs> but you might as well say a barking dog was correct. <laughs> but Netflix did, re in that earnings report we talked about last week and the week before, they did recast how they account for these original shows because most of the viewing happens in the first month. They're not getting that long tail in as big of a number as they thought they would. Now, you, you could slice that both ways. You can say that proves that the binge model isn't great because it makes people, you know, just do the free 30-day trial and then leave. Or you can say like, oh, no, but they binge through them, but then they stick around. They don't cancel their subscription, and that's what all of the Netflix cares about. What Amazon's doing here is saying, what, what can we do to get people in to Prime Instant? Because they don't have the advantage that Netflix has where people sign up for it all the time, right? They kind of need to get people to even understand it exists. So you give away three videos, you get a mini binge. And then you say, hey, you want, you want more? Come on into Prime. The, the question is, once you're into Prime, are you going to are you going to stick around because you only get one of these episodes a week, or is that going to annoy you and you just like give up and like I don't need this service? I, can't. I have a theory I, I, about this. Yeah, think, oh, what's think about this. One of the differences, well, first of all, Amazon Prime obviously offers a substantial benefit outside of the video space, and that you get your stuff faster and cheaper for the shipping side of things. But you pay Amazon Prime once per year, and I guess I guess they do have some kind of monthly version of it now. Oh yeah, but that's essentially right. you make that decision once yeah, a year. Now, the, what they try to get you, you to do is buy a year at a time. You're right. Right. So, so if you're going to make a yearly decision, do they want you to think about how most of the year you've been watching Amazon Prime or do they want you to think about how that one time at the beginning of the year you watched Alpha House? So it might be that that plays into kind of the whole way they see people subscribing to their model. Yeah, I try to think about like the there are series bad where. I would much prefer they just release them all at once and I could binge on them. Uh, even though it's kind of fun to go week to week and get all anticipatory and Game of Thrones, etc. There are others where I don't really care. Like, they just kind of pile up and then I catch up with them later. I feel like these two shows, Alpha House and Betas, if I'm into them, are going to be the kind of shows that are just going to pile up. Now, the nice thing here yeah. is I don't have to remember to record them to my DVR and manage that. They'll just be there once they've been released. But it, I... I guess what really matters to me is awareness. Like, how do you get people to remember to watch? That's the key. I think the key is to find out who's sawing in the background of someone's audio. I don't know if that's at the Twit Studio. No, is somebody that, knocking that's, on no, your that's, door? That's Sawyer. I didn't know you, you could hear that. He's oh, is like, that what that is? He's well, it's making funny, himself it's not, comfortable. It's, <laughs> he's like, you know, you know, how dogs will just claw at the. Yeah, claw you know what? On behalf of all the audio listeners, I'm just glad that they were able to solve that mystery for them. <laughs> yeah, Good. That would yeah. drive me nuts not knowing. I didn't even, I, that's I amazing. Hear it. That's so funny. You know, it's weird. Yeah, it's, sound, it's, some sounds just those scary. Awesome but. Heil mics. Uh, okay, so we also have the uh, the new drama by X Files screenwriter Chris Carter, right? Oh yeah. So the other part of the story is that Amazon's going to do another round of pilots. Uh, yeah. And and I I almost forgot about that. You're right. Uh, so yeah, Chris Carter. Is uh, got one called The After. Uh, he is the screenwriter on that. Bosch is based on Michael Connolly's best-selling Harry Bosch series, co-written by Connolly and Eric Overmeyer. Uh, Eric Overmeyer also wrote for Wire, uh, the, the Wire, and Treme, uh, and Law and Order. So they're doing the same testing model. They're going to put these out, going to let people watch them and give them feedback. And then it's not a democracy, but Amazon will hear your feedback in their benevolent dictatorship and uh, take it into account when they decide whether to green light the pilots or not. Interesting. I wonder how much ownership people feel over the selection process or whether Amazon even cares if they feel ownership. You know, I wonder how much of that is. is I if, think they if do. It's part I, think of that's, their, like, I think that's part of it. Yeah. 
So, so they want to be perceived as like, no, we listen to you. In which case, they got to do things to make sure to put on that put on that show. Well, I think I think they get to say it either way, right? If they don't green light it, they say we listen to you, and so many of you didn't like it that we're not gonna, you know what I mean? Like we oh, to that's you, actually, no, that's brilliant. Make actually, decision whichever decision they make. All right, well, I want you to listen metrics. to me, Tom, and tell me what the next big story is. Stop everything. It's another big story. We've heard your feedback, Brian Brushwood. <laughs> and we're Thank ready goodness. to tell you that Intel is giving up on web-based subscription TV. Or at least that's the report from All Things D. People familiar with the talks. These are different from people familiar with the matter, uh, mm -hmm. say that the company is in advanced negotiation to hand over the Intel TV project to Verizon. So they're not going to kill it. They're just going to move it over and say, OK, we've been doing all this work. We can't get it done. We don't have we don't have the clout to go into these companies and move them off their rock that they're clinging to for dear life. Verizon, maybe you can have a shot at it and you pay us a little money and we'll all be happy. All right, look, let's call this what it is. This is them selling scrap and what's left over of their dead project as they realized that coming in as an outsider to a deeply entrenched, entangled, nasty morass of licensing deal windows and people who just have it out for each other. There's a reason it's a cutthroat industry with backstabbing evil people and coming in and being like, hey, we're Intel. We make real good computers. And we noticed y'all are fighting. We thought we'd come in and maybe just make a magical box that gives everyone what we want. We made the PC. And it turns out they couldn't do it. So they handed it over to, I don't know, like, um, I don't know who to cast Verizon in with this. Like somebody who, Verizon's the one that warned Intel not to go in there. And when Intel comes out, it was like, it didn't work out so well, boss. Here, you want it? It's a beautiful piece See, of hardware. I, I I hate to play dueling metaphors, but the way I was looking at this was more like Bob Intel in his garage decided to get into woodworking and he made okay. this beautiful cabinet, right? But he doesn't yeah. know how to stain. He just can't figure out how to stain the thing. So it's just in its raw, unformed form, unformed form. Yeah. It's, it's a raw state. And next door neighbor, Ken Verizon, he makes these nice little cabinets and stuff, but he's just not good at the big stuff. Right? And he's yeah. beautiful right. staining, right? Just amazing staining. So so Bob looks over to Ken and says, Hey, you wanna buy this wardrobe? Cause I just can't figure out how to stain it. And you seem to be pretty good at the staining. And Ken's like, Well, heck yeah, man. I could never build something like that. But sure, I'll take that stain the crap out of it and sell it for millions. Done. Okay, here's I uh, far be it from me in our game of dueling metaphors to criticize your metaphor. But the only <laughs> thing that miss that's missing in this is that I believe that number one, that wardrobe would hold clothes, whether or not it was stained. Um, and, and you don't have a part in your metaphor where it's like, this is the best wardrobe I've ever seen. However, it's against the law for me to put any clothes in it. You See, that's what it is. You, 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 you got to have this whole element. Well, no, but you with don't the, buy the, a wardrobe with clothes already in it. I was thinking the no. staining was the was the was the the final piece that makes it no, worthwhile. Okay, like, right, sure, you can buy right, a wardrobe, but there's no stain on it. It's not. It's not done yet. But uh, yeah, but the reason the reason they're We're getting rid of this is not thing, because they. Yeah. yeah the, the, the reason that they're in this position is because is not because they couldn't make a brilliant piece of hardware. I totally believe that somewhere deep in Intel Labs is the one set top box to rule them all, and probably the engineers have all this pirated content because they're just testing it out in the QA lab. They're like, oh, we went and grabbed eighty five different movies, and it's grabbed RSS feeds. Look how fast it it loads this, and it's everything you want. This is the one true box. Uh, all you got to do, boss, is just you know figure out how to make it. Uh, you know these licensing doohickeys and make it work. And then they figured out. I'm I'm certain that that that's the case where they figured out like, wow. Um, yeah, that's not possible for an outsider who doesn't have clout and and background and all this stuff. And so I, the, I tell you, the real winner here is people who are already subscribed to Verizon because they're just suddenly suddenly they may get a cable box that doesn't totally suck. Congratulations, Verizon Maybe. subscribers. I honestly, I I think Verizon in charge of this makes us all losers. Frankly, uh, I agree because because what Verizon's going to do is put out something that helps Verizon. 
and, and yep. makes you pay Verizon more money. And what Intel wanted to do was disrupt the model, and they, can't, they couldn't do it. And believe me, from the beginning, I thought there was a pretty outside chance that Intel could do it. I'm like, maybe it's a it's so crazy, it just might work situation where Intel, because they don't know they can fail, will come in and win. Uh, unfortunately, no, that didn't happen. Yeah. Freaking Apple can't make this happen, right? Yeah. If Apple yeah. can't make this happen, and granted, it's a post-Steve Jobs Apple, but if they can't make it happen with all of their clout and leverage and influence, uh, I, I don't know if anyone can make it happen. I, I think our iTunes moment for online video might never happen. I totally agree. Keep in mind that the reason the iTunes moment occurred was because the music industry was so deeply, deeply terrified by utterly unprecedented uh, rampant piracy, the way they had never seen before. And they, you know, the Internet's new and the distribution's new and they're like, there's no way to stop it. And they had DRM schemes that were laughed at and they were so terrified and so defeated that that, you know, Steve Jobs was and granted, of course, Part of it was the position they were in. Part of it is the fact that Steve Jobs is the kind of guy who can march in and say, shut up, 99 cents, take it. And everyone signed up. Uh, and we're not going to have that with video. We've with, These people have the benefit of hindsight because the truth is if the music industry had just held on, if they had just, you know, if they had done the infighting that they – that we're seeing with video now, then a lot of individual labels would be better off than they were under the iTunes model, uh, financially speaking, theoretically. And I think that that's what everybody's hoping to play right now. And I don't think that uh, I don't think that iTunes was able to fill the role of Steve Jobs. But most, most importantly, I don't think that the industry is in as bad a place as the music industry was those, uh, what, 10, 12 years ago. I think our one true hope here is the avalanche of consumers finally picking up web video we're going, we're going to have to wait for that it's going to have to be that kind of pressure where people suddenly are are just watching video over the internet and they're watching alpha house and they're watching house of cards and then the industry starts to regret that they've resisted this and killed innovation along the way but that that takes longer than if somebody comes in and kind of gives them a nudge and uses a yeah. little stick and carrot to move them down the road Right. Well, let's take a break and thank our sponsor for today's show, Shutterstock.com. Brian, did you know Shut about Shutterstock.com? You're always talking about the Shutterstock. You know what I mm -hmm. say? I'm going to put your feet to the fire, sir. Name one good thing about Shutterstock. Just one. Uh, you can choose from over 1 million high-quality stock video clips, 2D or 3D animation and motion graphics. I guess, that might be count as more than one. I'm sorry. Okay, okay fine, fine. Name two good things about Shutterstock. I dare um, you. They, 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 have, they review every clip from professional photographers and amateurs and add over 12,000 high-quality video clips every week. Okay, fine. Name one example of some regular Joe. Ain't no highfalutin Hollywood types. I get it. You're producing content for your National Geographic. You need some super HD slow motion of a car blowing up. Fine, I'm not that guy. Name one regular Joe that would use Shutterstock. Well, I don't know if I count as a regular Joe, uh, Brian, but I, I I used it. I got some of the video clips. I put them in a clip box so I could figure out which ones I needed. Uh, and and that, that was real handy. And then I put them together and, and edited together a, a trailer for my book, Lot Beta. Hold on. Wait, stop talking. See? Jason's showing me a movie trailer right now. It looks really good. No, that that's my book trailer. That's not a movie trailer. No, that can't that's, be. You don't have the resources to make a movie. What? Well, that that is the trailer the for your book, Bot Lot Beta. Bot Beta, yeah. Because <laughs> you couldn't buy it now. Uh <laughs> <laughs> that's Shutterstock footage. That's Shutterstock footage and stills. That's all that is. Makes it look like I spent millions of dollars on it, but it was or less at than least 100 bucks. Millions of hours working on it. How fast were you able to put that together, man? I think it took me a couple hours. That's Hold amazing, dude. Hold that's hold. fantastic. Yeah. Uh, all right, look, fine, fine. Everyone's at home listening. They're thinking one thing, Tom. What's in it for me? Merrick? Name one thing that's in it for me, Joe Listener, the frame rates. Um, free account. You can sign up for Shutterstock's free account. You don't even need to give them a credit card or anything. You just start the account. You can use that clip box I was talking about, put some stuff in there, kind of imagine what your project's going to be like. And then if you decide to buy some of the clips, you use the offer code frame rate 1113. And new accounts will receive 25% off any package. I realize that's two things. I'm sorry. I overloaded you there. Um, so Checkmate, so Tom. Shutterstock. 25% well off new accounts. 
Use that offer code frame rate. 1113 1113. Hey, you know what we should do? What? We should thank Shutterstock for their support of frame rate because it's November. We're coming up on Thanksgiving. You know what I was going to say we should do is we should take off all our clothes and jump into the slipstream. Tom, I want you to know that I fully expected there to be a 30% chance that you would have your clothes all the way up. I'm just not that fast. Um, sorry. Just, plus, it's kind of chilly in here. I don't want to do that. Good idea. Uh, yes, so Netflix testing Ultra HD video for launch next year. This is a brand new thing, Ultra HD video. Yeah, no, now wait a minute. 4K. What was the one? What was the one where previously they were calling like 1080p video? That was like Super HD or? Ah, uh, yeah. Because remember no, they branded that. it. No, I remember they were they're trying to. I, I don't even remember anymore. But UHD is the new marketing term for 4K. So when you see those, same thing. But what Netflix is doing is actually interesting. They've added their test clips because they've been testing out 4K service to the regular service. So anybody who has a 4K TV can access those clips and play them on their television to get an idea of what Netflix's 4K service would look like. Now, these text clips are kind of like movies in the 1880s, right? You know, it's yeah. like pictures of a boat. <laughs> it's stuff like it's that. Man, man Crosses the Streets is the title <laughs> that you got to search yeah, for. Yeah, it's like anybody who had an uh, HD TV in the early part of the 2000s remembers Discovery HD Theater, uh, which would just show pictures of landscapes with deer wandering around. A jaunty out. dog. The yeah, epic yeah. tale of a dog exactly. who barks. <laughs> it wasn't even a tail. It was just a dog in high def. So it's stuff like yes. that. But actually, they, they say they hope by the end of 2014 to have actual 4K content available for people to stream on Netflix. Do you think that's important for them, though? I mean, it's cool. Mm. I, from a technology standpoint, I'm like, yeah, Look, here, nifty, here, I want to see Here's the that. thing. Here's the thing is, is as we know, as far as the quality of content, um, you, we are experiencing diminishing returns, and this is just the way our eyes are built, and there are people who get close enough to the screen that they're going to see a slight increase or difference, but the way you're going to see it is is on. Here's the thing, is in the days of HD, we wanted to see HD really bad, be, or we wanted content for HD real bad because we had the HD screens, but we didn't have anything to put on them. Nowadays, if you have a 4K screen, you have uh, video game systems or, or you know, uh, or, or computers. You can create content and look at it and say, like, wow, that's very, very precise. You don't need to watch Dog Crosses Street, you know. You're not sitting there begging for video. Um, there are so many applications for this technology. And I've said before, like, I want 4K. I'll never watch a 4K movie on it. I want it for, our, for video gaming and for replacing three of these stupid monitors. Um, so I don't know that there's that much of a pressure from the consumer side. Now, I do think there's a tremendous pressure from, you know, from Sony and all the, the the studios. They're like, we need to have another thing. Hurry up and make this the thing. And you're like, yeah, that's what you said about 3D. And they're like, shut up. 3D never happened. We're all 4K now. Uh, there was so no I think 3D. that's what we're seeing right now. Yeah, there never <laughs> yeah, was 3D. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Time Warner Cable. Remember they had that fight with CBS uh, this summer? We, we kind of followed that. That was fun. Yeah. It was good times. Uh, well, look, look, these things happen. They're just little, little dust-ups, Tom. I'm sure it just came and went. No big deal. Why? What yeah. happened? Time Warner lost 306,000 TV subscribers between July and September. And according to their own report, uh, not only is that a huge change from the previous year's loss of 29,000 subscribers, but they said, yeah, it probably has a lot to do with CBS. In fact, we had to pay $15 million worth of credit to Showtime subscribers because we pulled Showtime during the dispute, even though it really wasn't part of the dispute. So... This was incredibly costly for Time Warner, and they still had to raise the amount that they ended up paying CBS, uh, 8.4%, according to the, to the earnings report. Yeah, I believe at 306,000 subscribers, it is the largest loss they've ever had. Is that correct? That's Logi what it says here. Steepest quarterly article, loss yeah. of TV subs Now, keep it, yeah, it's TWC's steepest loss of TV subscribers ever. Um, that's astonishing. And um, as bummed as I am about the news, like I really feel like if what you want is to watch, you know, I mean, you know me, I just want to set fire to the energy, uh, to the to the current setup with cable. Uh, and so hearing uh, Intel sell out and sell pieces to Verizon, I think is a real loss for someone like me. But seeing something like this, you know, burn uh, is a real win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because right, think about it. That's all people. That's 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 a third of a million people who now have to find another way. 
And then, and, and after, like, I did not want to cut the K, the cord. Uh, I did out of rage in that moment. And since then, I've had to find another way. And it's been great. And I hope more people figure that out. Here's another German word for you. Schadenfreude. Yeah. <laughs> Let's move on to Tube Tops. A little things of interest here. Uh, UK's Sky TV, do you remember that thing? It's kind of like a Roku box, but it only gets you Sky TV service in the UK. Uh, okay, yeah, right. Because yeah, yeah, Sky yeah. TV is also the network, right? That's the name. That's the right. Fox Stones cable network. Right. So the, yeah. the, 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 uh, the Now TV is the name of the box itself. Now Got TV it. only gave you sports and movies until now. Wow. Uh, for £4.99 a month, you can add a pass. To watch a small broadcast TV package, which includes Sky's own channels, Sky One, Sky Atlantic, Sky Living, Sky Arts One, and then the Discovery Channel, MTV, Gold, Disney, and Fox. Uh, so I was going to kind of nice. give them a hard time over this, but then, I mean, that's a pretty good deal. Now, does it say that it has to, you have to already also be subscribed to them through traditional cable? I would have no, to this is the, so. the whole deal with the Now TV is like you just subscribe, you buy the Now TV and then you subscribe to the stuff. Wow. Well, that's huge then. That's that's shockingly close to what we want with being able to get HBO Go separate from the cable industry. And four ninety nine and you know, four ninety nine pounds, that's about eight bucks a month. Uh it's uh, uh that's that's wonderful. That's that's an amazing and bold now it's, move. It's an introductory price. It's one of those things I know. it doesn't say how long how whether it goes up to 9.99 or what it goes up to after the 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 first uh deal. It's a, it doesn't even say how long the introductory offer. It just says at an introductory price of £4.99. But there aren't contracts. That's the other thing about Now TV is they don't they don't make you commit to a certain number of months. You can you can pay a month, you can cancel a month, it doesn't matter. Uh, also, we've talked about these uh, really expensive devices that let you watch theaters, m movies at, at your house. And yeah, sure. IMA IMAX has sunk $250,000 uh, into Shenzhen-based TCL Multimedia Technology Holdings. And this is, this is one of those companies that brings you these devices that you spend a bunch of money for. Uh, well, they've they sunk more than two hundred fifty thousand dollars. Two hundred fifty thousand dollars is the price of the box. My my fault there. Uh, they've sunk a bunch of money in this because IMAX wants to have a home theater play. That's right, IMAX, the brand that has always meant exquisite forty foot tall screens, wants to mean a eight foot screen in your living room. Well, it could be bigger. Yeah, uh, I, you know what it is. They're trying to trade on that. Like you can have IMAX in your own home. Because oh, guess what? No, no, no. We've, we've figured out that it's only the aspect ratio that makes it IMAX. Hence, we can have yeah. IMAX in any theater, whether it's actually an IMAX screen or not. I mean, um, I, this is this is what you see when when brands try to cash in on their on their brand value, and and it makes sense because IMAX used to be mean exactly what is the, like the eighty millimeter prints, the the supersized ones. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or maybe they were even bigger. I forget what, but, but it was a film-based format. And so if it was going to continue to mean something, you know, they decided we could either have it mean a special new type of digital projection that's not there anywhere else, or they're all like, let's just sell that brand off and take all the monies. And then that's what we're doing. IMAX is going to, over the next few years, mean less and less and less to, uh, to where essentially you're like, oh yeah, no, I have an IMAX 30-inch uh, TV. It's it's real great. It says the word IMAX on it. And it's in that it's IMAX aspect ratio. <laughs> It's like the Oreo candies that you can get in Japan. They're yes. not Oreos at all. They're just chocolate-covered. Yes. They're like Twix. <sighs> well, that makes me sad. Let's see what Film Film can do to cheer me up. All right, remember Netflix said we're getting into original films? Well, they've picked their first one. Uh, the Square, a documentary that has some Oscar buzz, I'll let you know. Uh, it's been a favorite of a bunch of the film fests that have been going around. It won the Toronto International Film Festival Documentary People's Choice Award. And so Netflix has picked it up. Now, you may say, well, wait a minute. If it's a Netflix original, how does that make it an original? Essentially, what when they, these documentaries and these indie films go to film festivals, they're trying to get a distributor. They're trying to get somebody to grab it and say, "We will put it in wide release." Netflix is saying, "We'll be your distributor. We're gonna we're gonna buy the rights to distribute the square and distribute it to everyone on Netflix, so they'll be able and to keep, watch." It. 
keep in mind also, like, this is how the entire industry goes. Everyone who says, like, if, you know, if it was an HBO original, like, somebody has oftentimes a documentary that they're shopping around, that they see at local film festivals. They're like, we will pick it up and distribute it, and they will brand it as an HBO original. The only difference here is that, you know, Netflix, we, we, we live in an age where this kind of stuff is a little more out in the open, and the fact that they're putting out, I, I don't know if this is a press release, or I guess they did. They said, um, uh, I don't know how, whether they're announcing it or this is a story about it. But yeah, this is uh, like, yes, Netflix Originals is the brand. It means that we got it. We got it first. We're branding it for, for a brief window. You will only be able to see it from us. And uh, and so we're putting our stamp on it. But yeah, Although it is kind of weird. The, the filmmakers themselves funded a limited run in, in theaters in New York and California so they could get it qualified for Oscar consideration. So there were other ways to see it, but very limited. Now everybody who has Netflix can see it, as long as they have an right. internet connection, right? And right. it's not like Netflix hasn't picked up documentaries like this before, but they never got behind them. It was more like, oh, you can't find anybody else? We'll, we'll run it. Now they're saying we're actively going. We think, you know, they're getting one with Oscar buzz, right? They're going for a high level one that somebody else might have paid for. And they're saying right. we're going to trumpet it. We're going to be there at the Oscars saying Netflix is up for an Oscar. That's what that's what they want to say. So, the, you know, we're yeah. like we were up for Emmys and Oscars this year. Um, so did you uh, did you watch did you watch the YouTube Music Awards? A little bit. You know, my wife works at YouTube, so she watched it. I think she didn't have anything to do with it, but she, I think she felt like she should watch it. I caught some of it. I tell you what, I both loved and hated it. Uh, really? When, all right. Well, uh, give, me two, give me the two Toms, all right? A tale of two Toms. So Which Spike one do you want to go first? Spike Jones directed it, and the concept was instead of just having performances, they were going to do one-take music videos. So you're watching a music video, but it's happening live, right? More than just an onstage performance. Some of those were incredible. Uh, I, I was watching them and I was like amazed that they were pulling this off in one take. And it, I was like, I feel like I'm just watching a video. This is this is crazy. This is really well done. And then they would go to the host. And I, I don't have a problem with the host themselves. Uh, they're, they, they're fine. Jason Schwartzman and Reggie Watts. But what they had them doing was just dumb. And it looked dark. It didn't look well lit. And it felt forced. It felt like they were trying to be genuine instead of being genuine. And I just dislike huh. that part greatly. Uh, okay. And so, wait, is that is that both, that's all the parts that you loved and all the parts that you hated? That's pretty much it, yeah. Okay. Well, I, I, the only comment I have is that I thought it was interesting that um, the live views peaked as high as like uh, almost 250,000 uh, for the part that Lady Gaga was on. Wow, what am I looking at here? This this is really cool. This was all live. This is one of the live music take? videos, yeah. Oh, this that's was great. a one-take music video happening in real time. That's awesome. So um, uh, what I thought was interesting is that the article that I read regarded, you know, 220,000 viewers as, as a disappointment. But in the world of live streams, I mean, that's, that's, that's one of the greater hits, I would imagine. Kind of, it depends on where you're coming from, right? If it's, hey, this indie streamer got 220,000, that would be mind blowing. If it's, hey, we got a million for other streams that we've done on YouTube, it doesn't cut. Well, it. But, but okay, but granted, like the competition is is when Felix Baumgartner jumps off right. out from yeah. space, or you know? Olympics. Like, I'm sorry, yeah. okay. you weren't able right. to get jumping from a balloon in space numbers. That's I was the guy who created space. Jackass. Oh. Get off my yeah. case. <laughs> Honestly, and, and and a lot of the criticism from the YouTube creators out there was that this didn't represent them very well. That the attitude in between the live music videos was, hey, we don't care. We're not professional. We just do stuff. We're disorganized. And the creators are like, that's exactly what everyone, what we don't want people to think about folks on YouTube anymore. Like, why are you confirming the stereotype, essentially? Yeah. Well, and people are in the chat, like, uh, Ye is saying, like, well, when you're YouTube and you spam 300 million users, 250K is kind of low. Those are not the total views. Total views coming out of this are going to be in the high, yeah. uh, you know, teens, uh, you know, in, in the two-digit millions. Um, but of, of views, but but to watch anything live, like what? How many folks we got watching live on Twitter right now? You know this 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 show will reach you know however many hundreds of thousands of people. But then, uh, but watching live, you know it's it's a big deal when you get above five thousand people watching anything at once live. Definitely, definitely, and and 
Yeah, it's it, it's all a matter of what you compare it to. You, you can compare it to the MTV Music Awards and their peak Nielsen rating, or you can compare it to uh, other live streams that are of similar types of content. You compare it to YouTube's own Comedy Week and Geek Week. These This is much more successful. Uh, honestly, I think it's a learning experience. The weirdness is YouTube is not a content creator. YouTube is a platform for content creators. This is like right. Comcast doing a show, right? Yes, that's a so great way to I think put that's it. That's one of the disconnects here. Not that Comcast yeah. doesn't have Comcast Sportsnet and stuff like that, but this is, you know, I'm 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 talking about the provider putting something together. You know, what it would be like maybe. it would be like it would be like in the 1980s if Zenith put on a big show because like <laughs> Zenith just makes the TVs like that's all YouTube is is the nuts right. and bolts and the player or if if the NTSC standard presents the NTSC players in a well, comedy like extravaganza two six four or M MPEG yeah. LA put on <laughs> yes I want to see that all right let's get into some scan lines. Scan lines. Here, I'll jump in first. Is that cool? Yeah, go ahead. I stole it from you. Uh, Disney and Lucasfilm are struggling over the 2015 Star Wars release date. Uh, the word behind the street is where people are whispering words in, in whatever Star Wars language uh, is that uh, basically uh, Disney really wants them to stick to the 2015, but the folks actually making the content is saying that's really hard. It gives us zero margin for error. Everything has to hit on all four cylinders. Uh, I mean, all 25 cylinders because it's in the future the past. Uh, so they want to go to 2016 to accommodate the changes. Um, keep in mind, you got three movies and two side movies in there. So it's a very big project. As a fan of Star Wars, as somebody who wants to see them do it right, I don't think they're going to take forever. Uh, I'm okay with waiting. I'm, I'd rather have it be good than than fast. Kathleen Kennedy walked into that writer's room and said, try. There is no try. <laughs> the rest writes it, writes 2015 itself. or I'll kick your ass. That's what yeah. I'm saying. <laughs> Let go of your feelings, writers. 2015. Use the force. Amazing. I don't care how you get it done. Let's make it happen. Hey, uh, Aereo is launching in Denver today. In fact, we had a couple of people write in and said they were getting it last Friday, so it may have launched a little earlier. Uh, but Denver was not on on the docket it was sort of a stealth launch a sneak launch uh, they also have announced that they've got a couple of other markets to add in to the whole ball of wax uh you know and what? Try to try to get them to that 22 cities san antonio indianapolis cincinnati and columbus are among them since we have 30 more seconds and it looks like you yanked the story uh there was another one that said oh, the that, power uh, story were, yeah well, they were estimating that Aereo is reaching around uh, 95 to 130,000 people in uh, in New York, which I honestly couldn't decide if that was a big number or a small number because I could see it either way. I assume it, it sounded from the, the article YouTube like it was awards. a big meter. Well, <laughs> touche, sir. But that was based on some folks in there looking at the – they just counted the number of antenna stations. And they knew how many antennas were in each station, and they're like, you don't buy that many antennas unless you're serving that many people. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Machinima, which you know I'm a fan of their story because uh, it's very unconventional. They are expanding. They are hooking up with um, uh, with cable partners in Europe. Oh, this is not the story I thought it was going to be either. Uh, yeah, there we go. They're also hooking up with Twitch. And, of course, uh, Machinima reaches a lot more folks than, than Twitch does monthly. But um, this is good news. Twitch and Machinima is a, uh, is a match that I was surprised we hadn't seen already. Uh, in, we may have seen some kind of partner deals with them on small projects. But to see a bigger deal association with them, I think it's really, really smart. Twitch is, uh, is, is smart to get into the live space. Machinima in the, I don't want to say scripted, but offline space. Uh, I think it's good all around. Yeah, sorry, sorry about that. I, I screwed up the link in the doc. That's why Brian was flustered a little there. But I think this is important because this is one of the issues with YouTube fostering people on YouTube is they might go somewhere else behind besides YouTube at some point. You know, YouTube may be dominant, but it ain't the only game in town. And I'm not sure how YouTube feels about this kind of stuff. And you'll just have to wonder. Netflix hooking up with its third cable TV partner in Europe. I know you don't like this, Brian. Or do you? What? Not there. But uh, Den Denmark's Wow Network is getting uh, is getting Netflix as part of its offering. This joins UK's Virgin Media and Sweden's ComHem, uh, being the three cable companies that now offer Netflix as part of their packages. Okay. 
You don't want to have a big fight about cable TV and Netflix? No, and, no, no. no. All right. I think that's great. That's good. Yeah. Let's, let's go on. Right. Next story. It's great. It's great. Next story. Uh, sports ball. <laughs> this just did with a sports ball story. It's Brian Brushwood telling you that the FCC has a rule that would end TV sports blackouts forever. Uh, I don't know much about this. So for uh, correspondent, for, well, Brian, for explanation, we go to our You're not allowed to drink beer during a sports broadcast anymore. So no more blackouts. You'll be sober. <laughs> no, no. This is this is this is saying that if you're on cable. They won't, they're going to say, you can't make them black it out. Because right now, if I'm in St. Louis and the St. Louis Rams are playing on ESPN, but they haven't sold out and the local station can't air the St. Louis Rams game, ESPN can't show the St. Louis Rams game. It's probably a horrible way to explain that. But, but now under these rules, it would say, oh, well, no, cable station wants to show this. You're not going to make them black it out in local markets anymore. It's lifting a geo restriction, which is pretty interesting. I, uh... Let's see if it goes through. When did the Rams move to St. Louis? Thought they were the L.A. Rams? Oh, yeah, that was a thing. Hung after I was done. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right, Plex. here we go. Oh, Plex, yes. right? Go. Uh, yeah. Plex Sync uh, is now having a new beta version called Cloud Sync, which saves your streaming-friendly content in a third-party cloud storage service like Box or Dropbox and Google Drive. Any metadata carries over. And then you can stream it to your mobile device. So all your Plex uh, films, all your Plex shows that you store in your Plex server will be available on the go. Yeah, dude, that's awesome. I wish, um, man, I haven't been hands-on with Plex. I don't think you have as e either. I, I, this is one of those times where I really wish that we could physically go to conventions and conferences and get hands-on with all this stuff. And even though it's a pain in the butt, like when we were there at, um, uh, not E3, the other one, CES. Uh, the CES, CES, like, you know, we all roll our eyes like, oh, covering the same crap. Why don't you just send us a press release? This is one of those different things. Like, you and I might have been at their booth and know a little bit more about what it's like to be hands-on with it. Well, it's a, it's a media server, right? And so it, it automatically takes your stuff, puts it on a media server, makes it available through your home network. And that's all you'll ever find out about it. Horrible. <laughs> Horrible. Let's check in on the winter. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for coming here today. Uh, it was a long, hard-fought battle for the Marriott candidacy for winning the winter movie draft. But we would like to congratulate Casey McKinnon and uh, wish her the best of luck. <laughs> the great champion that she will end up being. Uh, yeah. I'll tell you what. Andrew's game got uh, $27 million. See ya. Uh, you know what? Tom Merritt What's out. great? Tom, Tom, you know what? Let's let's spin this. Let's Let's look at the bright side here. I think it's safe to say that with me having one of my movies yanked and being replaced with Paranormal Activity, oh, right. uh, I yeah. forgot I what the tagline is. Uh, yeah, that's right. You got one yanked as well. Paranormal Activity, The Marked Ones, coming out on, on, on Paranormal on Activity, we ran out of numbers for the sequels. <laughs> yes. I think it's safe to say with between your Ender's Game and my movie loss and terrible performances, uh, you and I are clearly out. So this is actually kind of fun because now... We could sit back and just bet who's going to win. I actually, Casey, of course, has a dominant lead right now, but she's, and she's got movies coming out right now, or, or uh, yeah, Free Birds and Las Vegas. I, you know, I don't think she's going to win. as well as I thought it would be. It only got 15 million. I thought it would make a lot more for her. So you know, I did may, too. Well, Thanksgiving. They give Jeff Kanata some hope. We'll see. No, 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 no. Father Robert. All my money's on Father Robert. Really? Fa oh, yeah. Father he has Robert. nothing right now, but don't forget, he's got Thor. Frozen and the Wolf of Wall Street. And keep in mind, Wolf of Wall Street had massive, massive buzz, and we warned him that it had the risk of being moved to the spring, but he went right. for it anyway. And it turns out our movies moved to exactly, spring. Exactly, right? So uh, I, I, if I'm going to bet, it's going to be on Father Robert, which is surprising because he actually he kind of got screwed and was left with uh, 14 extra dollars that he couldn't even spend. So, yeah, he felt yeah. like he was he was done. Uh, but especially if yeah, Thor I don't think he is. goes over the top, which it very well may be. He could give Casey by the way, for money. Thor coming out this Friday and taking on, uh, I mean, it's going to knock out Ender's Game. Ender's Game was number one over the weekend, but Ender's yeah, Game, yeah. Free Birds, and Las Vegas all going to get their butts handed to them by Thor the, the Dark World. And Jeff Kanata has the book thief out this week. But he only paid Steal those books, books Jeff. So it's not, yeah, it's not a big deal. Don't worry about it, Jeff. Let's talk about what yeah, we're watching. What we're watching. 
So uh, we'll, we'll talk about The Walking Dead at the end because you actually did watch the first one, but that's all you got through, right? Well, let, let me do this. Let me suggest this because I my plan last night was to watch the first one and then watch the other, uh, like I think I had three more to catch up during the day and then the reality of, you know, being back to work after the weekend hit me so it didn't happen. Why don't I, why don't we do a little bit of a spoiler free because there wasn't much plot wise to talk about in it. If, if we, if we could speak in spoiler free terms, I could talk about what it's like to come back to the walking dead and then we'll give you a proper, because we'll I, I will have four, after. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Right. Or, or, no, no, I don't mean, I don't mean today. I mean, next week when, when I've actually caught up on the plot because okay. there's not okay. yeah, really much fine. plot to talk about. Uh, first of all, how many people from the wire are now on the walking dead now? Well, we got D'Angelo, we got Cuddy. Um, is that it? Yeah, wait, I thought it, it, it was the chick because I only saw her for a little bit. The chick getting in, saying like "cover your butt" so many times. Was was she the the the, the female cop from The Wire, the one that got shot in the first season? Spoiler alert: uh, mm, mm, Cops get shot in The Wire. Brian, don't ruin <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <for laughs> um, no, I, you know what? You you may be right. I don't know. Okay. Well, uh, at any rate, I was very pleased to see that. Uh, number two. It, you were right, man. I came in and I felt at home. It was like everything was a bad dream. And I was reading straight from my favorite era of the comic, of, of the graphic novel was, was that brief time when everything looked like it was going to be all right. And they, and they, they were securing everything at the prison. Everything was going along. Um, and we're going kind of backwards in time, like stuff that happened, you know, third season's all about the governor. There were, there are plot points that happened before then that they're going back and visiting now characters that, that were from that time. It was, uh, it was really great to be there. Uh, and I, I don't know what happened to make, uh, to make Rick gun shy, so to speak. Um, but, I uh, I got to admit, I was kind of, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to speculate, um, because I might accidentally stumble into a spoiler and your reaction might, might stumble, so, um, the description for the first episode of this season said something, something, but how will they handle this new and dangerous threat? And the nature of the character you see in the first episode and the nature of her talking about very specific, specifically the terrible dark things that she had to do led me to believe that the new dark threat would be a threat that for, uh, I'll speak in code, um, uh, uh, for readers of the comic book, which was how Dale met his end. And I was surprised it wasn't. And I don't know if it's still going to turn out to be or not. Um, does any of that make sense, Tom? And if you think that answering will spoil anything, feel free to not say anything. Right. Okay. So here's the other thing I noticed. <laughs> is it just me or has, and now keep in mind, I'm not, everyone's like, why you hate, it's like, you can factually state something about a show and what why you notice you about it and still it. think it's good. Yeah. Right. Uh, is it just me or is the effects a lot cheesier now than it was? Like, um, I don't know if cheesy is really the right word, but I did. Just, I, they're definitely more flamboyant, maybe. I don't know. It's obviously the- computery. Like, like the whole first season, there, there, were, there were so many moments that, that you could that you could miss were computer graphics, with the exception of the last episode with the terrible compositing on the exploding CDC. Uh, now it all feels like that CDC explosion where I'm yeah, having only, to forgive I, it. I, uh, I only noticed it with the zombies, and, I, and there's not really that much else. Well, and, the, and the ridiculous, like, yeah, like you could just tell, like, like it doesn't line up when they stab eyes, and uh, uh, you but know. I and, think and what you they're tell, trying like, to do is go a little more gory than they even yeah, were and before, and I kind of like I, that. So it's true. I don't. It's I. I, I oh, don't I do. like that. Yeah. It's yeah. I don't. I don't think. I think it's this is zombie land. The, come on, give me some. Give me some zombie. I, I, know, I know, but but that's but that is to me the gore is the least interesting part of the story oh, of not, the Walking not Dead. In, but it didn't feel right that they were like we're in a land of zombies and we almost never kill a zombie and when we do it's nice and clean. Like come all on. Right, all right. Anyway, I that's guess. a difference of opinion. Uh, you know I what? Know. I was I was rather sick this weekend, so I spent a lot of time just watching television and. Uh, all the television I watched was streaming. I did not have, you know, and I still have direct TV. I kind of, I want to be the last one out, turn the lights out when we all leave, <laughs> that sort of thing. I, you know, I'm reporting from the other side, essentially. I, I didn't use that at all. I, I watched a couple episodes of Father Ted off of Hulu on my laptop and, and streamed it to my Apple TV. Uh, I watched an, the It Crowd finale, finally. I got around to it. I hadn't watched it. It was hilarious. I loved it. Lots of great winks to the fans. A little nudge at Will Wheaton. Uh, a little nudge at a couple other geeky things in there. I watched a few episodes of The Dresden Files. 
which I think I had watched when it was first on, but I didn't remember any of them. Uh, and I finished It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia on Netflix. So I'm up to oh, right what current. Uh, I, I don't have FXX, so I can't watch it on broadcast or cable TV. But uh, I, did, I did get all the way to the end of what's available there. I even watched an episode of Sliders. I love that show. It was just funny. Yeah. But it was, just, it was just fun to go like, oh, what should I watch next? You know, look a little at the recommendations. Just remember some stuff from my head. Get led from one to the other. Um, I have to say. I do have. It, getting, getting rid of cable is all about the mindset of, but I want that, right? I want right. sports or I want to watch, you know, this this show on Bravo that I would have to pay for anyway. And maybe I don't want to pay for it. Uh, it there's plenty of good stuff to watch if you're willing to be that practical grandpa like guy that's like i don't care what's cool and what's new i just want to watch something fun there's lots of quality stuff so two things first of all the um uh i actually have a homework assignment because i got as far as i could watch on archer on netflix but there's still a whole season i haven't seen yet and i need to hurry up and watch them all because this friday in austin i'm gonna watch archer live and a fr friend of a friend uh, is is working on the tour and says he's going to get me backstage. He says, I can't oh, hang out with you, fantastic. but you can hang out and do Yeah, so that'll be a lot of fun. Uh, second of all, uh, you're right about the cord cutting thing because there, it, you will find a way. In the chat, they're kind of doing this snarky like, how's Brian watching Walking Dead without the cable box? It's like, well, dollar ninety nine per episode on iTunes. It's not that hard. Yep. And, and, and let me tell you, man, uh, when you're not spending 80 bucks a month, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, usually in the next day, right? When you're when you're saving eighty bucks a month, you know, we bought a twenty dollar Blu Ray for a movie that we only intend to watch like twice, and it didn't even feel bad because we're like, whatever. Wow. We got, we're High so rollers. far in the black. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but like, it was we great. Walk out the front door with two dollars and just throw them because we're like, we're not paying. <laughs> Good. We're rolling in it. <laughs> <laughs> we buy an Apple TV each month and just throw it away. We figure we figure some homeless it. person will find yeah. it. You're you might old. you might like it. Yeah. All right. Let's see what's the feedback. Yeah. Now it's time for feedback with Brian and Tom on Frame Radio. Yeah. What's this feedback from Lon here? It just seems self congratulatory. Uh, yeah, that's why I did it. Cause, cause, well, mainly because, um, because I didn't know if has it really been three years. Uh, Lon says, thanks for three years yeah. of beating the what we want, when we want, how we want a drum. And, I, and to me, I'm like, wow, I didn't realize it had been three years. So so thank you for that, Lon. Yeah. Thanks, Lon. I uh, also got one from Robert said, hi, guys. I have listened to the show probably since the beginning. And I feel like you forget about those of us that actually care what our movies look and sound like. I cut the cord years ago and moved to Comcast Business. This is the one I wanted to ask uh, uh, Scott Wilkinson about. Should we hold it until next week? Because he's talking about the quality of picture. Yeah, and sound. we can't. We should, uh, we should hang on to that one. Yeah, all right. We, we'll have Scott Wilkinson on next week and we'll talk about it. But I do want to respond just to the first part. Um, the implied accusation, and I don't know how much of it was him just being snarky, but the the assertion that we don't care about quality. And then I was about to be like, no, I do. And then I then I realized, like, for my home viewing, I kind of don't. Like, like now, when I go to the theater, there's a reason that I, you know, only want to go to the Alamo Draft House because they do exquisite presentation and, and they give you the best fidelity experience. Um, but at home, like this morning or last night, I intentionally bought the standard definition Walking Dead because I knew I'd just watch it once. And then I was going to, like, who cares? And uh, honestly, he, he phrased it nicely. I, I feel like you guys forget about those of us who actually care what our movies look and sound like. And maybe I, I don't feel that that's that cutting because I'm like you. I don't. I've got a tin ear. And, <laughs> you know, as long as it's HD, I'm not, I'm not that picky. I can see the difference in the video. But, but like you said, sometimes I buy the standard def because I'm like, man, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, yeah. So we are heretics. And Bill Scott Wilkinson will set us straight next week, Robert. Yes. Don't you worry. Bill in Connecticut, uh, cutting the cord since 2001, says, as I was watching Hulu Plus on my TV, controlling my actions through my Android app, playing interactively via my Chromecast player, it occurred to me this configuration might be the secret sauce to the second screen challenge. As Chromecast apps become more mature on this platform, there is great opportunity that this under $40 device may become the answer for second screen viewing, effortlessly linking your handheld and the TV you already own. Huh. So he wanted think to share his this. theory with the rest of the class. Here's what I liked about this is because yeah. the challenge right now is you're sitting watching cable and they're desperately begging you, go get up your, pick up your iPad, go to this place, please pick up a second screen. By its very nature, Chromecast is the second screen experience 
only it's the television that's the second screen. So it's like it's like I, 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 there is no way to watch anything on Chromecast without automatically being in a position to have a second screen. Uh, and and I, th I think he's right. I think that may be the answer to it. Uh, now there's well, a all these side. all these second screen efforts strike me as we want to make you use the second screen even though you don't want to. And what right. what he what Bill has hit on is hey you're wanting to use the second screen. So if there is an opportunity to come up with something that actually makes sense for people. There's your opportunity. I think it's genius, Bill. Good job. Yeah. Deborah sends us a flip side story about the exact same device. Hi, Brian and Tom. Like many, my husband and I are trying desperately to get away from the madness of paying 100 bones a month for Dish. We get Netflix streaming at the excellent price of eight clams, which allows us to stream on two devices. I bought a Chromecast. It was working okay. It's really buggy, but well, I'm desperate. Until my husband and, and I tried to stream simultaneously. You have exceeded your limit of two devices. My husband was watching directly on his iPad. I was using my laptop to cast to the TV. I called Netflix, and their answer was that the Chromecast, can, the Chromecast counts as a device. WTF? I asked if a Roku or a BoxyBox would count as a device. No. I called Google, well-known for their outstanding customer service. I think that was sarcasm right there. And got, you guessed it, nowhere. Call Netflix. Netflix blames Google. Google blames Netflix. And here I am with a dongle at my... Um, knows. Oops. She actually wrote my um nose. She did write my um nose. Yeah. <laughs> I'm curious as to one, how this can happen in a just and right universe and two, who's to blame? Uh, insane conspiracy number 47, Netflix and Google want this to happen, so I'll have to pay for the 12 shekel for streaming plan. On the bright side, uh, happy hours are starting a bit earlier in our house world. <laughs> uh, okay, so here, here's what I think right now. Correct me if I'm wrong. I haven't used the Chromecast, but wasn't one of the benefits of Chromecast it, was that there were pages that you could stream to, like it acted like a PC when it came to watching Hulu and you didn't need Hulu Plus necessarily. Am I imagining that? Was there no, right. some kind of benefit I think what like you're that? thinking of is unlike when you do Apple TV mirroring, for instance, and you can't use your computer for anything else because it's taking everything on the screen, Chromecast says, we're going to go and we're going to get that URL directly to us. So your, your phone isn't involved anymore. Your tablet's not involved anymore. It's not a big deal. And what she's running into is... Netflix hasn't properly accounted for that. And so when your phone connects to Netflix, it says, ah, one device connected and, and using the, uh, the service. And then your Chromecast connects, it goes to two, two devices connected. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and and it, should be, it should be smart enough to say, oh, that device that's connected has used the Chromecast button. So it should no longer count against your device limit. But they, they didn't code it that way. They didn't, they, the programmers didn't, didn't account for that. Yeah, so, they didn't know so that this would be the direction. So now you're dealing with customer direction. service people who probably aren't thinking it that far through. But what's happening is, is, is just user design failure. They're saying, it's not that Netflix has a conspiracy and they're trying to kill you. And Google's like, hey, it's not our fault. It's, they're right in this case. I know what you mean about Google support. But in this case, they're like, that's a Netflix issue. If they have a device limit, they need to count the devices more accurately. Right. So I guess uh, if I was going to make a prediction, I would say sometime in the next four to six months, they'll get this worked out. Um, uh, yeah, that's uh, either that or, you know, I don't know, paying 12 bucks. I'd pay 12 bucks for, for the streaming. Yeah, I really should, dig the Netflix Yeah, I streaming. get it. Deborah's, Deborah's got happy hours to pay for. She doesn't want to have to yeah. pay an extra, <laughs> extra amount if she doesn't need to. Uh, and it's she doesn't a good need point. to, right? They've got two devices, two people. And what, what, one goes to the Chromecast and suddenly the other one can't use it? I, I get the frustration there. But it's not, it's not a conspiracy. It's just, oh, we didn't think of that use case when we implemented yeah. the Chromecast button. And that's a whole separate bit of code over there that we now get, get a whole separate team on to figure out, like, when we change that code, does it have any other problems? Does it introduce any other bugs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera? So, like you said, Brian, hopefully in a couple of months they push a patch and it all gets fixed but so hey, hey chromecast uh, is in beta <laughs> oh, <that's So> there, <laughs> did, did gmail ever come out of beta, beta officially it did it, it did it came out okay. of beta a few years ago yeah good uh well, hey man you, can i can i be mysterious for just a second and just tease sure. something yeah so like please. if you follow me on the socials please. you're gonna start seeing some some veiled references to 11 12 13 can't say what but just 11 12 13 something might i don't know about you tom but shopping sure is a pain in the ass. 11, 12, 13. That's all I'm going to say. Wow. Brian learned to count above 10. That's so cute. <laughs> Congratulations, man. Did you learn that from Penny? Uh, or... It's Josie. <laughs> she Josie. already explained it. <laughs> 11, 12, 13. All right. All right. Keep an keeping eye. it. It's easy to remember. 
as long yeah, as if you, you have, if you have a theory, why don't you send it in to fr at twit.tv where uh, we do our best to read all of the feedback from you. Apologies to everyone we weren't able to respond to specifically, but we do read all of it. And uh, I guess what else? Uh, episodes oh, available at twit.tv slash fr. Don't forget about the, the uh, tech history monthlies that Scott Johnson and I are doing in the Ooh. Amazon Kindle store. Uh, the, right uh, the November one is out, which we're already in November, but we're working on a December. We'll have one every month illustrated by Scott Johnson with what happened every day of that month in technology history. So look for that. You can find us on the web at twit.tv slash FR. You can watch us live 3.30 p.m. Pacific, 6.30 p.m. Eastern time. You can get us on demand whenever you want. Our YouTube channel is twit is youtube.com slash twit frame rate. And like Brian said, emails frame rate at twit.tv. We'll see you next time. And that's like an American 11, 12, 13. None of this December 12th nonsense.